Does the new biopic Elvis find its rhythm, or does it stumble? Can critics help falling in love with it, or has it sent them to Heartbreak Hotel? Keep watching for what they've said so far. Elvis Presley was an undeniable musical titan, but he thrived in other forms of entertainment as well. Most notably, he graced the silver screen many times throughout the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, cementing himself as a multimedia star. Though he died in 1977, he lives on in pop culture with legions of fans across the globe. So it's likely that director Baz Luhrmann's Elvis, which features Austin Butler in the title role, won't struggle to find an audience, even though that audience has had to wait nearly a decade for the film to come to fruition. According to The Wrap, Elvis has been in the production pipeline since 2014, when Luhrmann attached himself to the project. Fans got nothing but radio silence on the film's progress until Tom Hanks joined in the role of Elvis's manager Colonel Tom Parker in 2019. He was my destiny. Shortly after, word got out that Butler would play the king of rock and roll. The supporting cast filled out, and principal photography began in early 2020. Elvis was originally planned to debut in October of 2021, but a cascade of COVID-19-related delays pushed it to its current June 24, 2022 release date. Elvis Presley's widow, Priscilla Presley, has given the film a heartwarming endorsement, and their daughter, Lisa Marie Presley, has given her stamp of approval, too. A few lucky critics also got to see the movie early. According to the Rotten Tomatoes reviews, they've got a lot to say about it. As of the making of this video, Elvis boasts a 77% Rotten Tomatoes critic score with a consensus that reads, The standard rock biopic formula gets all shook up in Elvis, with Baz Luhrmann's dazzling energy and style perfectly complemented by Austin Butler's outstanding lead performance. That's an impressive showing that the movie didn't earn by accident. In the eyes of many critics, Elvis has a lot going for it. While explaining that it may take some time to cozy up to Elvis, Matthew Toomey of The Film Pie writes that once you do, you'll find a worthy tribute to a music legend. He also points to Butler's take on Elvis as an especially strong selling point that alone is worth the price of admission. Radio Times' Jane Nelson offers praise for Butler as well, also mentioning how Lerman's famously flashy, colorful style couldn't have lent itself better to the production. George Simpson of The Daily Express notes, The film is ultimately a fittingly over-the-top tribute to one of the most famous people in entertainment history. However, Simpson warns that viewers shouldn't expect lockstep historical accuracy, advising that one of the many Elvis-centric documentaries out there would serve you better as an exploration of his life story. Joning Su of Awards Daily claims Elvis has all the makings of an Oscars frontrunner, specifically when it comes to Butler's performance and the movie's technical strengths. I have to say, you could not take your eyes off of Austin Butler. That said, plenty of critics who got to check out the film ahead of its theatrical premiere weren't nearly as impressed by the final product as their contemporaries. Peter Bradshaw of The Guardian notes that he found Austin Butler's approach to Elvis Presley serviceable but not necessarily enthralling. He wrote, As it is, this is just another exercise in Elvis impersonation, its upper lip twitching to no purpose. Awards watches Adam Solomons enjoyed what Butler and, to some extent, Tom Hanks brought to the table. But Solomons writes that he feels their efforts weren't enough to hold an otherwise messy feature together. Richard Lawson of Vanity Fair presents similar sentiments in his review titled, Austin Butler is the only thing that works in Baz Luhrmann's Elvis. Lawson concludes by saying, Elvis presents the spectacular but has little to say when the lights are off, and it's just the man grasping to find purchase in the making of his own legacy. Likewise, Slant Magazine's Jake Cole was particularly disappointed in the story's superficiality and lack of interest in exploring the nuances of Elvis's personal and professional downfall. Time will tell how general audiences will respond to Elvis and all that it packs into its nearly 160-minute runtime. We'll find out when it finally opens on June 24th. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about upcoming movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.